series that we are doing here at River Oaks. During our Fab Five series, we are looking at five fabulous prophets from the Old Testament. Remember, a prophet was somebody who basically had a superpower. They got to see into the what? Do you remember what it was? What they got to see? Yeah, they actually got to see into the future. God would show the prophets what was going to happen so that the prophets could tell the people what God had showed them. So let's take a look at our first three prophets that we've already talked about in this series. So first, we had our friend Elijah, who prayed that God would send fire down from heaven, and he actually did send fire down from heaven, showing the prophets of Baal that he was the one true God. And the next week, we talked about someone with a very similar name. His name was Elisha. And Elisha told Naaman to go and dip himself into the Jordan River seven times to be healed of leprosy. And that story showed us how just like Naaman was healed of his leprosy, we can be healed of our sins by trusting in Jesus. God's grace is a free gift for all of us. And finally, last week we met this soggy guy here, Jonah, who became fish food when he disobeyed God and ran away trying to go to another land instead of Nineveh. But then God gave Jonah and the people of Nineveh a second chance to turn away from their sin and follow him instead. So today we are going to hear about prophet number four, and his name is Jeremiah. Any guesses where his story is found in the Bible? What book it might be? Yeah, it's actually called Jeremiah. And it's a little over halfway through the entire Bible in the Old Testament. So if you want to grab your Bible and follow along with us today, we'll be in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 27. So remember, I'm going to need you to help me draw some different parts of the story. So if you want to go pause the video and go grab a piece of paper and a pencil, um, that would be amazing. And that way you can draw the story with us. We also have these little comic pages here at the church, and we will be on page four this week if you already have one, but if you don't have one and would like one, your mom or dad can swing by the church and pick one up at our front office, and that will work too. So if you've got a regular sheet of paper, welcome back. I will have you take that, fold it once, and then fold it again so that your paper has four sections, just like our board here and you're gonna draw along with me as we go through the story. So let's get started. First of all, remember a few weeks ago when I tore my t-shirt up to, sell, to talk about the Bible story about the divided kingdom and how the 10 northern tribes became Israel and the two southern tribes became Judah? Well, God sent Jeremiah to the two southern tribes, the land of Judah. But a lot, like a lot of the prophets, Jeremiah didn't have a whole lot of luck turning the people back to God. Talking to the people of Judah was kind of like, well, like, hey guys, I'm Jeremiah, how are you? High five. Oh no, was that your face? I'm so sorry. Wait, are you okay? Hello? They're not. Let me try again. Hi, I'm Jeremiah. What's your name? Hey, you know what? You remind me of this movie I saw once called Wally. This wall has no sense of humor, I'm telling you. Well, guys, for Jeremiah, talking to the people of Judah was about like talking to a wall. They weren't listening to him. Nobody did what he said, and because of that, Judah suffered the consequences big time. And all around the borders of Israel and Judah, Powerful nations began rising up and looking for new lands to conquer. They were looking all over. Now, because of their sin, the nation of Israel has already been conquered by their enemy. And now the evil Babylonians are looking to conquer God's people in the nation of Judah as well. There's only one thing stopping them, the king of Judah. So in your first square on your paper, you're going to draw a king. Now, the king of Judah, he was a powerful man, and he had agreed to remain loyal to evil Babylon and to pay them money in exchange for peace. But the king of Judah is getting really tired of paying, and now he's talking with other nations about just going to war with the, pa with the powerful Babylonians. But God had other plans. So, God sends a prophet named Jeremiah to confront the king of Judah. 
And when Jeremiah shows up, he's wearing a large yoke around his neck. Do you know what a yoke is? It's sort of like this big wooden beam that would be put on the neck of animals to help control them. So Jeremiah is wearing this big yoke on his neck. That's going to make a statement. And he tells the king, God has given you over to Babylon because of your wickedness. Babylon has put its yoke of power on your neck, and now they control you like a wild beast. If you accept the yoke and serve Babylon, you will live. But if you don't serve Babylon, you will die. Any prophet who tells you differently is a liar. Now there's another prophet in the room, and his name is Hananiah. He grabs the yoke from Jeremiah's neck, and he smashes it on the ground. And he shouts, no, that's not what the Lord says. The Lord says, I will break the yoke of Babylon and you will be free from their control. But guys, God didn't really say that. So guys, in your second box, I'm going to have you draw a broken yoke, a broke yoke, if you will. And if you don't really know what a yoke looks like, it's kind of like this, but you could just draw a broken stick, sort of, to signify that. But guys, the problem with what Hananiah was saying was God didn't really say that. And he was not happy with Hananiah. So he gives Jeremiah one more prophecy to share with the audience. And he says, the Babylonian yoke is made of iron and it is not so easily broken. I have given them control over the wild animals and I will give them control over you too. And as for you, Hananiah, you will die within the next year. Unfortunately, Jeremiah is alone in his warning, and no one wants to listen to him. Even though Hananiah dies just two months later, and you'd think that would get their attention, the king of Judah does not want to believe Jeremiah's prophecy. So he continues to conspire with Egypt and wage war with the Babylonians. And when the enemy king of Babylon hears about this conspiracy, he is quick to attack Jerusalem, just like Jeremiah had prophesied. The only thing that keeps the Babylonian army from a swift victory are the giant walls surrounding Jerusalem. So guys, while the walls hold Babylon at bay, the soldiers of Judah are searching everywhere for Jeremiah. And even though it's the sin of the people that has caused this calamity, the people of Judah call Jeremiah a traitor, and they blame him for all the bad things that are happening. And when the soldiers find Jeremiah, they grab him and they throw him in this old dried up well that's full of mud and nasty stuff. So you're going to draw Jeremiah sitting in the mud. And they left him there to starve, guys. And alone in the dark, hungry, and sitting in this gooey, stinky mud, Jeremiah is wondering if he will ever live to see the light of day again. But guys, God had not forgotten about Jeremiah, so he moves the king of Judah to show him mercy. The king has Jeremiah taken out of the well and placed under house arrest where he remains guarded until one day, guess how long, two and a half years later, after a lot of fighting, the great wall of Jerusalem comes crashing down and the Babylonian soldiers rush in. And the fighting men of Judah are no match for the fierce Babylonian army and soon the city is set on fire and the remains of the wall are smashed to bits. So you're going to draw this big wall broken and on fire in your last panel. The enemy soldiers, they steal all the gold, all the silver, and all the valuables from the temple and the palace buildings. And worst of all, the people of Judah are made prisoners and they are forced to leave their homes. And everyone but the poorest people are taken to Babylon where they become servants to their enemy nation. But God does not allow harm to come to Jeremiah. Jeremiah's reputation has reached all the way to the king of Babylon. And this enemy king has heard about his faithfulness to God and how his efforts to keep Judah from rebelling. So the king gives orders that Jeremiah has to be kept safe. Jeremiah is actually invited by this powerful king to live with wealth and honor in Babylon. But Jeremiah doesn't want to do that. Instead, he chooses to stay in Jerusalem and help the few poor people who still remain there. And guys, although his life has been spared, Jeremiah finds very little happiness in this time. 
He weeps for the destruction of his, this beloved city and of its people. And Jeremiah cries out to God and he says, This city, once so full of people, is now deserted. Because of Judah's great sin, her enemy is now her master. And this is why I weep and my eyes overflow with tears. No one is there to comfort me. Guys, can you imagine being like Jeremiah? He tried so hard to warn the nation of Judah for 40 years without any success. And it was like talking to a wall. That must have been so frustrating. And it was probably more than frustrating. It was sad. That's why Jeremiah is actually known as the weeping prophet. Because he had so many things to cry about. In fact, Jeremiah wrote an entire book of the Bible called Lamentations. The name Lamentations actually comes from the word lament, which means to weep or cry. So guys, let's see if we can come up with all the reasons that Jeremiah had to lament. So, first of all, he was discouraged. He was discouraged because no matter how hard he tried, nobody would listen to him. And then he was, he was really lonely. Everyone had turned their back on him, and it was like talking to a wall. Nobody would listen to him. He was lonely, and he, was, he felt like he'd been deserted. And he was definitely in trouble. The soldiers falsely arrested him, and they threw him in a well. And worst of all, he was devastated, because then the nation he loved had been destroyed, and the people had been taken away. Jeremiah must have felt like he was just being crushed with sadness. Now, have you ever felt that way? I think we probably all have at one time or another. And I know I felt discouraged and lonely and even devastated. And whenever things like that happen to us, it's easy to feel like we are being crushed with sadness. Let me show you kind of what I mean. So this can, it's kind of like us. It's empty and when really sad things happen to us, we can feel empty inside too. Like our joy is gone. I'm going to put it on the floor and guys, my foot is kind of like, you know, life and the sad things that happen to us. The sadness sits heavy on us and it keeps us feeling kind of down and when the sad things just keep happening, it can feel so heavy that it breaks our heart and crushes our spirit. Oh, but the Bible says that it doesn't have to be like that. Let's take a look at our memory verse for the day. It says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and it saves those who are crushed in spirit. Guys, when we feel overwhelmed by sadness, God is close to us. It's kind of like this jar. This jar is like God. The jar is clear, which reminds us that God is invisible. We can't see him, but he's always there. And the jar is also strong. Like, I can squeeze this and it's not going to move. And that reminds us of God's strength and power. So if I were to do the same thing I did before to this can, that can's still empty. But now, when the sad things keep on happening, God saves us from being crushed. It's just like that with our relationship with God. So let's see if we can learn this verse together, because there's something so comforting about this verse when we're feeling sad. So we're going to say, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. And it goes Psalm 34, verse 18. Very good. So guys, when Jeremiah felt sad, God was right there with him. He kept Jeremiah from being crushed by the sadness, and he gave Jeremiah hope that the sadness would one day pass. And you know what? God does that same thing for us, too. It's okay to feel sad sometimes. It's going to happen to all of us. Just know that when you feel sad, you're not alone and that God will save you from being crushed by sadness. Know that you can pray to God and you can ask him to help you to find the joy in life again. And best of all, know that for those of us who follow Jesus, God has promised us that one day we will live forever in a place where there's no more tears or sadness. Guys, won't that be amazing? I sure think it will. So let's take a look at our big idea for today. It says, God is close to people with broken hearts, so we can find comfort in him when we are sad. Can you turn and say that to somebody near you? God is close to people with broken hearts, so we can find comfort in him when we're sad. That's so right, guys. Let's take a moment to bow our heads and pray. 
God, thank you for this story about Jeremiah. And God, even though it wasn't a very happy story, it shows us something so huge about you and how when we're sad, you're right there with us and you're keeping us from being crushed in spirit. God, I thank you that we're never alone and that even when we feel sad and like we're being crushed, you're with us to keep us safe and to keep us um, afloat and to help us to find the joy in life again. So I pray that we would remember that this week, God. And if we feel sad, that we would remember that you're with us. We love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So guys, here at the church, I'm going to add our big Bible story image to our timeline. And it's this picture of Jeremiah so that we can always remember how God is close to us and he comforts us when we are sad. Now after this video, I hope you'll take some time to talk to your family about maybe what you drew and show them your drawings and, and talk about what you learned from the story. Talk maybe about these questions we have here. What does the story teach you about God? And how would you have felt if you were Jeremiah? And why do you think you would have felt that way? And also, if you want to use these actual comic book pages that we have, Ooh. remember we do have them here at the church, so just ask your mom or dad if they would be willing to swing by and pick them up for you, and you can follow along in those pages and draw them along with our Bible stories each week. So guys, thank you so much for joining the story with your drawing skills. And remember this week that whether you're at church or at school or at home or anywhere, God is with you no matter what, and he wants to hear from you. So no matter how you're feeling, you can always go to God and talk to him about what you're feeling. And after this video plays, we are going to play our worship song for the week called Waymaker. And guys, that song is perfect for what we're talking about this week. It's all about how God is with you and he's healing hearts and he's with you no matter what is going on in life. And I just think you're really going to love it. And I hope that it encourages you this week. So guys, we have one more week with one more prophet. And I hope to see you back next week for profit number five. I hope you have a great week, guys. I'll see you later.
Miracle worker, promise keeper, lie.